What's up, everyone, and welcome to FAQ 141. Now, <laughs> uh, yes, FAQ, what's up? <laughs> As many of you guys know, you know, I stopped doing the FAQs and I started doing Sunday with Ola every Sunday, okay? And, you know, reason being that, you know, I felt that the FAQs were uh, getting a little stale, okay? I've been receiving the same questions over and over, and it's just like, yeah, I just, just didn't feel it. Just didn't feel it. Anyway, now, you know, as I've done a couple of Sunday with Olas, you know, I have a little FAQ section at the end of those, but I feel that there's still so many other good questions out there that, you know, I haven't really answered. So as I asked people in the latest Sunday with Ola for questions, you guys showed me a fair amount of really, really kick-ass questions. So I figured I would still make the FAQs, but just less frequent. You know, whenever I feel like it, basically. And, you know, go back to the initial feeling about having the FAQs and that is to talk about music and guitar and all of that so Sunday with Ola will still be a thing every Sunday FAQs just less frequent here and there okay and you know as I started reading the questions again you know it felt really awesome it felt really awesome I got some really really good questions for this FAQ 141 so let's just go with the first most excellent question let's go Steven Markey, when will we get a six-string solar bass? <laughs> That's a joke! That's a joke! Sorry! Okay, I actually have uh, more important questions than this. I I'm, I'm just trying to be funny, damn it. Lachip Pollard, Ola the Sweet. Ola, I have a guitar question. How do I get my guitar to stop sounding muddy with gain? Even when I don't have a lot of gain, my guitar tone is still super muddy and chunky in a bad way. My EQ is set to bass at 12, mids at 11 o'clock, and treble at 5, maxed out, because the tone is so muddy, there's basically no treble. Okay, this is a good question. Now, those tone settings that you shared with me, uh, I, that doesn't really help. <laughs> because you're not telling me what amplifier you're using. But that's okay, I have a very generic answer to this question. Usually when you have a lot of distortion with uh, a lot of amplifiers out there, like classical amplifiers, use a lot of gain, you know, it starts to sound like shit, basically, and it's not tight. It's just a lot of gain. And, you know, makes sense. You're distorting your whole guitar tone, and that includes the bass as well. But the problem is, when you distort bass, it starts to sound muddy. Now, how do you fix this? Well, there's an easy trick for you right here, and I got a couple of examples. Something you can get for a pretty decent price, I would say, is to get an overdrive. Overdrive obviously introduces more gain. And uh, more gain is always good. No, usually when you use an overdrive, you add gain to your amplifier. Well, the thing is that with a lot of overdrives, you can also use them as a clean boost. How do you do that? Well, the trick is to not use any gain on the pedal itself. So, usually on overdrives like the Ibanez Tube Screamer TS9 or this Super Overdrive from Boss, I set the drive to zero and level to max. What this does is that the signal gets pushed into the preamp of your guitar amplifier and it will tighten up the sound. It works really well for a lot of amplifiers actually and you know, when in doubt, just try an overdrive. And then there's an overdrive like this, like the Fortin 33, uh, which is one knob, it's very simple, but basically it filters out a lot of bullshit that you don't need and uh, you know, it kind of hot rods your sound a little bit. Another thing you can do as well is to get active pickups. Personally, I don't think that is a good solution. If you have a pickup that you're really happy with, I think you should go with just getting an overdrive instead. It just makes a lot more sense. Seb, will you ever get Michael Okerfeld on coffee with Ola? Yes, I would love to get Michael on coffee. <laughs> I mean, I know people that knows people and uh, I should probably be able to get Michael on coffee with Ola. The problem now is obviously COVID, you know, and uh, we have to social distancing each other. The Coffee with Ola segments have been uh, scarce. I mean, people are not moving around anymore, so people don't go to Stockholm for, to play gigs, and that's usually when I get my Coffee with Ola going, is that when an artist comes to Stockholm to play, you know, 
I do the interview. That's how it works. And now, since COVID, you know, no one is touring. So, uh, yeah, but Michael, at least he's in Sweden, so uh, I might be able to get him going. Ted Doucette, question, whose skateboard is this and why is it in your office? Uh, <laughs> yes, this is actually my skateboard. You know, I started skateboarding actually before I started playing guitar. When was this? When I was like 12? 12 years old, something like that. And, you know, I was a little chubby when I was at that age and I started doing skateboarding and, uh, you know, I got thin. So it worked, it was really great and you know, I was up all night skateboarding with my friends and eventually I started listening to music and uh, started playing guitar as well. So like the three hobbies I had back in the day during the time I was like 13 was skateboard, guitar and video games. And that's all I did back then. Now, this is not my original skateboard from back then. This is probably like mid 2000s, something like that when I decided like, okay, you know, it would be fun to have a board again. So I got a board, this is a, well, element board, it's a Muska, you know, uh, the skater. This is actually not half bad of specs for a skateboard. These are the Destructo uh, trucks, uh, Bam Margera and some... This is, a, this is a pretty good skateboard, you know. The only problem I have now is that, you know, I'm so tall, so when I fall, it really hurts. Should I go see if I can do a kickflip? I'm gonna go and kill myself. <laughs> At least I'm gonna try and look good. Sad. <laughs> okay, see ya. <laughs> Bye. What's a nice life? <laughs> All right. I haven't touched the board in probably 15 years, guys. Okay. Well, no, that's first try. It's in the bones, man. Okay, okay. There we go. All right, shit. Now I'm I'm actually scared shitless. So I'm not gonna do anything more. I'm gonna break my back. That's pretty f insane that I can almost pull off a kickflip shove it. 25 years after I was actively skating. Damn. No. Blowjab Marinara N7 Dick. <laughs> That's a, that was my straight up guess of his name. Question for next week. How do you go about selecting a 4x12 cannab cannabinet? I'm looking at options from OB Omega Ampworks, Fortin, PV Invective and Mesa Boogie. I prefer tight tech deaf type of sound with some focused low end beef and I'm not sure how much to care about the cabinet build speakers front versus back load etc any tips on how to choose a likely pair to cab with a generator rev 120 or a pv invective that's a great question thank you even though it seems you know that i've tried every cabinet in the world i have most definitely not tried every cab in the world however i've tried the ones that have been significant for the metal world personally i'm a big fan of bass i like low bass and you know i like having more bass that you would ever need for a recording <laughs> uh, because bass is just a lot of fun bass and air just means that you know you're having fun in my opinion there's just something almighty about having bass and air and i have my mesa oversized cabinet now i know for a fact that the traditional mesa 4x12 i'm not a fan of I don't like the tone of the traditional 4x12, the traditional size, but the oversized Mesa cabinet is where it's at. It's one of my favorite cabinets. It's absolutely massive sounding and I'm very, very happy with the one I got. It has vintage 30s in it, which is sort of like my favorite uh, guitar speaker, in my opinion. I'm also a big fan of the T75s. But other than that, you know, a lot of the cabs out there, they're, they're more than enough. I really like the Randall cabinets that I got with my Satan. Uh, you know, really well built. I also have this Fortin front-loaded cabinet over there that's really kick-ass. So I would say I'm probably not the right guy to ask about this, but if you have a chance, you could probably score an old Marshall 4x12 and usually they sound pretty kick-ass. At this point, if they're used as well, the speakers are broken in fairly. If you just want a really, really good cabinet, I would recommend just go check out the used market because usually there's a lot of 
you know, Marshall cabinets out there. Otherwise, I can really recommend the oversized Mesa cabinet. I can really recommend the Fortin cabinet as well. It sounds kick-ass. But to be honest, I'm probably not the right guy to ask about this. I should probably get more cabinets, to be honest, so I can make a comparison. But, uh, but yeah, there you go. Guillermo J. Barroso. Hi, Mr. Ola. Your videos are awesome. Every Sunday as I watch, I try to check out the guitars on the back wall. That's an awesome rack, man. Uh, I would like to know what different tunings you have there or you use often. Thanks. So, let's go through the rack a little bit. Let's, uh, I think we need some lights for this. Okay, let me bring up the lights. Oh, look at that. Good morning. Did you guys see my t-shirt, by the way? I got that from a member. Look, it's uh, various tits. Hopefully this video won't get demonetized by that. But okay, let's check the rack here. So, the thing about my rack... <laughs> funny. No, but the thing about my guitar rack is that, you know, I kind of have the same guitars in it, you know, here and there. And, uh, and as we at Solar Guitars release new guitars, you know, I have something new as well. So, right now, right here, I have this, which is the SB1.6. Uh, yeah, SB1.6. It's one of the newer bolt-on guitars with a Floyd, you know, I, it's standard tuning. You know, I like to have different guitars in different tunings. And uh, that one is in standard. What's this? This is an old guitar right here. Now, this is probably the second limited edition guitar we had. And uh, it was called the S1.6 Evertune FSBM. And why I keep it, because we have new ones, is because this is one of my favorite sounding guitars. This is a chug monster right here. I don't know what it is, but, you know, it just sounds incredible. Uh, what else do we have? I have a G, G1.6 right here. This is in drop C. This riffing guitar right there that I just show was also in drop C. And, uh, you, you know, just to have a G in there. Okay, the new 7-string uh, bolt-on, AB1.7, drop A, I guess. Okay, here's another one we haven't seen in a while, but th it's been standing here for a good while. This is the one of the first GC guitars that we made with the Ola England logo on it. We made it limited, so I think there's only like 50 made. And this was the first one, and it was just a test. Today I probably wouldn't have done this narcissistic logo <laughs> on uh, a guitar, but it was a test. Just to see how it fared, you know, with the brushed uh, satin and a gloss finish like this. I, I think it turned out pretty cool. Probably in drop C. And here I have a A2.7, which has been uh, signed by the majority of my Coffee with Ola guests. Obviously not the ones that have been remote, but... Uh, you can see like Bulb and Gem Majura, number one stalker. Devin Townsend, Dino Casares, bunch of different guys. So that's cool, I just have that. And uh, maybe I'll do something with that later in life. Another A1.7B with a Floyd, uh, also in standard. And as you can see, a lot of the guitars that I have have Evertune on them because I'm, a, I'm just such a big fan of Evertune. And I think this is an E flat, actually. Now, this is an interesting guitar. This is very dusty, but this is the absolute first artist guitar that we had from the absolute beginning of uh, and launch of solo guitars. This is the A1.6 Artist, the absolute first one. Zero, zero. And I have an EMG 81 in it. That's why I have it here, just so I have an EMG 81. A1.6D. Probably my best playing guitar. Holy shit, it's amazing. The neck on this one, even though the necks are basically the same, there's just something, you know, in between them. And uh, this one is just like, ugh, just so good. GC 2.6, uh, very, very standard G-type guitar. Sounds excellent. A1.6. So if you're ever into, like, getting an Evertune guitar, this is basically the least expensive Evertune guitar we have. It's the A1.6, and it's just bare bones. Every tune, metal, up your ass, every day. S1.6FR, this is the one with the tremor in it that I made a video for, so it doesn't go out of tune. It's out of tune. <laughs> it shouldn't go out of tune, I just have to set it up. Great! And here's my bass, this is my Warwick bass that I use uh, here and there. You know, it's a really good sounding bass. And, uh, oh shit, I have this here. Why, why do I have this here? This is my uh, A1.7 Artist, the first open pour guitar we made. And, uh, why do I have it there? I've been doing clinics with this one, and, you know, it's been through the world, and it's, uh, yeah. It's a really sick guitar, and I've been using this a lot. Maybe I should do a giveaway to my members with this guitar right here. That's a good idea. Become a member today. Thank you. Yeah, so those are the guitars that are currently in my rack. This always changes, okay? Tomorrow there might be other guitars there. Who knows? We'll have to... 
back to Cosinus. And that, my friends, was the last question. I really hope you enjoyed this FAQ. Uh, if you have any more questions, please post them in the comment section of this video. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>